Welcome back to another episode of Crave TV. Today we're here at No Lie at their brand new beer hall. It's quite an occasion today. It's Oktoberfest. They're having a little party. So I need to find Adam. I'm already on the show. Where are you? All right, I'm slacking today. Well, let's go find John. Let's go. Hi, I'm Adam Hegstead, chef and restaurateur in the, in the Northwest. I'm all about the people because that's what hospitality is built on. Hi, I'm Chandler Baird, local foodie and lifestyle influencer at Spokane Eats. I'm all about highlighting our local eateries and the communities that support them. Crave TV is a telling of stories through visiting the places and restaurants, meeting the people who make it happen, and talking to the chefs who help create this amazing industry. This is Crave TV. We're here in this beautiful day at No Lie Brew House, talking with John Bryan about Oktoberfest. So tell us about what you have going on here. All right, so the Oktoberfest at No Lie was inspired by Munich, Germany. We mm -hmm. got to go there pre-COVID and hang out at the Hofbrau House for a day, which was crazy. It's 10,000 people in what they call a tent, with two upper decks, massive Oompa band stage, you know, chickens, pretzels, oxen. <laughs> I mean, what you would imagine wow. a Western European party. Yeah. So we came back. How big is that? It's, well, I mean, it, it, the one house puts 10,000 people in it. And there's like 14. Yeah, that's oh huge. And then it's the world's biggest 14 county. 14 of those? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. And it's like the world's biggest county fair. It's, it is crazy. Um, but we brought that back and we, we were lucky enough to get this 4,200 square feet. How do we create as close to a Hofbrau House, Munich, mm -hmm. Germany experience in Spokane and just share that experience we yeah. had? Right. Yeah. So that's today. And what makes it real special, as soon as you come in the door, you get a one liter Stein. Yeah. So from Munich. Yeah. And so then baby Stein wow. there. Baby Stein. <laughs> you get a one liter of beer. Those are yeah. cool. And um, we kind of spice it a little bit with the first 200 people through, mm -hmm. get a really cool Oktoberfest limited edition oh, cool. t shirt. So it's wow. really about outreach and just trying to get people excited to come, you know in your experience and experience yeah. it and yeah. just share yeah. in that community yeah. that we all need coming out of COVID. Well, right. I think a lot of people have the perception that it's in October. Yes. So, tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> September 17th through I mean, October 3rd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I called October Fest, so I get <laughs> yes. it. But. So it's over as October comes in. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, but it's been a bunch of fun. We got this awesome Oompa band. They're all very classically trained musicians, brass. Oh. And then they learn the Oompa songs. It's kind of a rock and roll Oompa yeah. today. And yeah. it's fun. super fun. Oh, and then we cool. got the procession of the brewers with the Firkin keg. The Firkin keg is naturally carbonated. Yeah. And then to tap it, you have the, the mallet and you, you, you bang in basically in through uh, the bung and they tap the firkin and then the party goes. Oh yeah, it sprays so, all over. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So oh my gosh. we're trying to bring some culture and yeah. fun and sharing to the city. Well, Without I think, having to go to Germany. This yeah. is, Without going yeah. to Germany, Perfect. yeah. Well, yep. creating a, a community event surrounded around, you know, something that yeah. has a lot of tradition and mm -hmm. but you're sort of making it your own Spokane style. So I think yeah. that's pretty cool. And there's other brewers in town that be doing, I mean, we're all getting this movement of, there's been many more Oktoberfests this year yeah. mm -hmm. of each brewery or pub, which is amazing. Yeah. Cause every community is beginning to come out. Yeah. And um, I think it's actually possible Spokane could probably be the Oktoberfest centric place <laughs> in Washington, yeah. even yeah. over Leavenworth, which wow. would be super cool. If we do it right, yeah. people will come for that experience. Yeah. Yeah. So authenticity, you know? Yeah. yeah. And you have the advantage of this massive space. Yeah. We've turned uh, this in kind of like a beer campus. Yeah. Because yeah. you walk up to the garage door, yeah. you get a 4,200 square foot beer hall. Then we have obviously our two pub areas and then the most amazing patio yeah. on the yeah, river. Yeah, yeah, overlooking oh the gosh. river and yeah, yeah. It's so on a beautiful. day like today too. Yeah. Ten well, years in the making. Yeah. yeah. Well, then the beer hall, you kind of have that sort of feeling all year long, that sort of Oktoberfest beer hall feeling, and I think that's pretty cool to be able to start that. And when we were in Oktoberfest, we took we took a group of twenty of our staff mm -hmm. with a few distributors and, a, and an account. Yeah. Really? So we were Cindy and I were like herding cats the yeah. whole time. So when we were there, you're like on hyper like aware of where everybody's at with yeah. ten thousand people. Uh -huh. But in that moment, I was doing videos yeah. and. and I kind of fell in love with the place. Yeah. And I was like, everybody needs some of this. How do we right? recapture it? How do we recapture it? It's it's just so fun and festive. Even if people have had maybe a Stein too many, it's people <laughs> just laughing, right? Yeah, yeah. And then if you get on a train to leave the city, if yeah. you're going to go to the outskirts, it's all the families coming in from outside of Munich 
to be a part of the big festival. Mm -hmm. But then every city, if you want to call them ham hamlets, or they have their own Oktoberfest. Okay. So as you travel through Germany, every neighborhood area will have an Oktoberfest. Has their own little style. Yeah. yeah which is like a carnival. Which is type. like what we were trying yeah. to do here, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, then we had the great idea. guys, you know, Matt from Humble Boat, yeah. Matt from Whistlepunk. Yeah. And they they do their own Oktoberfest too. Okay. And I think it's that neighborhood capturing that yeah. spirit comes along. Um, what struck me in Munich too, it's very international. Mm -hmm. And so it's damn near every country. Everybody's coming from everywhere. Yes, to, yeah. to seek to that experience. experience. Yeah. yeah. yeah Which is cool. what Spokane could be. Yeah. So next year we're going to Germany. Yep. Yes. And there you go, right? We're I guess we're bringing some year. friends. So tell us about <laughs> what is the Oktoberfest style beer? An Oktoberfest style beer is uh, traditionally a lager. Mm -hmm. And they're traditionally a lot of the grains out of the fields um, that are very lightly roasted, uh, very drinkable, um, kind of a low hop. Mm -hmm. And it's very sessionable. Okay. And because it's all about uh, enjoyment. Um, sessionable. What does that mean? Sessionable. So it's 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 lightly hopped. It's not heavy in malt. Very okay. refreshing. Okay. Easy to drink. Okay. Easy to drink. Yeah, Goes yeah. well with foods. Mm. Has Is a there... little bit of sugars, but not too much. Has yeah. like a little bit of that bite, but not too much. So okay. it's like a little bit in between of all of it. Good there, starter I mean, beer for people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the beers friendly. there are like mm -hmm. four and a half percent alcohol. And because they're slinging oxen and, and you're big, drinking this much chickens, <laughs> and you're drinking that, so you want to be time. full either, yeah. right? Yeah. And pretzels. That's yeah. kind of the diet. Oh it's, yeah, the pretzels. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want a big heavy malt forward or high alcohol or a real like in German beer tradition, you have real bitter anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but if you're drinking ten percenters and you have two of these, yes, <laughs> you it, may it, not it, be in a, good a shape. A great Oktoberfest feels like a picnic or uh, like a Grange Hall. You know, just people coming together yeah. without any uh, pretentiousness, yeah. mm -hmm. and like just you're just there to just be, just having fun. Yes, yeah. and yeah. nobody's looking to bump into each other. It's yeah. just you're just there to be, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that's the best part. When I was there and saw this international flavor, I was like, all these people from all these different people speaking all these different languages, <laughs> but the common language was this, yeah. <laughs> and that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that's very yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Join us after the commercial break. We're gonna head over and make some pretzels in Adam's kitchen from scratch. From scratch. Let's do it. All right, we're here at Delicious Bakery to make some pretzels from scratch. We're here with Chef Matt. He's our chef for our commissary at the bakery. Uh, so he's made up some dough for us. What's in the dough? Salt, flour, water. It's dough. Dough, yeah. yeah it's very <laughs> pretzel dough. One of the things that you need when you make pretzels is, um, is almost, it's like lye. Um, we don't use actual lye, so we bake some baking soda and some foil to create that chemical reaction that mm -hmm. gives the uh, pretzel a, the, the crunchy is on the, the outside. Chewy, the chewy is on the outside. Of okay. The eggs, so. Okay. So do you do, we have that do you like baking. dip it in water? Is that how you do it, or you just do yeah, that? Yeah. So we're gonna poach these after we uh, okay. them out. Okay. Ooh, ooh, it's so hot. It's <laughs> kidding. It's not. <laughs> we already baked it. But okay, so we have the we have the lye here, and um, the lye. So basically, it's the baked baking soda, and so we'll put this into the water. Okay. It's a uh, ten to one ratio, so we have the water going here. And you put the baking soda in. The, yeah. So you actually bake the baking soda? Yes. I've never yes. seen it done and like this. And so there's a chemical um, reaction that happens between the baking soda and the foil. When you bake it at a low temperature, it uh, turns it into a, a different sort of a chemical format. And then it creates the lye water. The lye water oh, creates wild. that chewy sort of texture on the outside of the pretzel. Yeah. And so that's how we get it. Because I always do water baking soda, but I've never baked it in foil. So that yeah. is the missing step. Yeah, you bake it at a low temperature for, like, I think it's like an hour or something. I can't remember. At least an hour, yeah. yeah. Low temperature being like 150? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, so this is ready to go pretty much. He's already had the water ready. Okay. So now we're going to roll the pretzels off. All right. So this is the one that we, we each get to do one. So. Okay. And then we get to compare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can just roll them out right onto the table. Okay. You kind of want it to grab, grab the table. Yeah. <laughs> so when you roll it out, I usually go outwards, right? So oh. when you're pushing it down, you push it, give it like a nice firm push on it. It's a lot easier when you're doing it on butcher block or something like mm -hmm. that. Seems so the table isn't grip quite as good. And I what mean, kind of like, what's the width we're going for? So we're going for, we're going to wrap the pretzel. So we're going to be able to flip it. And this is just one pretzel? It's one pretzel. These are going to be huge. Right? They're, they're not that big. Are they they're not, not? They're not as big as the ones that, no lie. I feel like this is kind of a hack because the table's cold. Yeah. So it's like helping. Yeah, it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. And so when you're rolling out like this, you just keep spreading it out. Okay. Okay, and then like since the table's cold, yeah, it doesn't 
it doesn't grip it quite as well. So you can like just keep you just keep spreading it out. Okay. Then you can just make it however however thin you want. Okay. Okay. Now the tricky part is the twist, right? So let's see if I can do it. I haven't done it in a long time either. Like that. Oh, sorry. One more. Okay. Flip it over. Flip. Cross. Oh, what about the double twist? Have you seen okay, the double see twist? Let's see it. All right. <laughs> We're going to have to think this through. And then another twist. And right. then you wrap it. You see that? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's okay. good. Okay. I'll go with single, you go with that. <laughs> okay. We'll see which one we'll turns compare. out better. We'll compare, okay. Okay. Okay, so once they're like this, then we're gonna dip them into the, the lye bath. Okay. So Matt will help us with that. Okay, so we just let them cook in here. How long do we wanna cook this for? Just a few minutes, so pretty much until they like float up, yeah. Okay. So it's similar to like a bagel. You yeah, know, yeah. Same sound idea. of you take the bagel, you proof the dough, roll it out, and then poach them in the, you would, do regular water, not live water, obviously. Right. It still has that chewy sort of texture on the outside. Okay. We're not cooking them all the way. We're just getting the outside poached and uh, getting that, that bath on them. All right, so we poached them. So next up is egg wash. Ah. So we do egg wash in this so we don't have to, it gets a little bit more evenly coated. Smart. But um, also so it's like a little faster too. Right. So you just go. Just kidding. Please don't. <laughs> so what's in that? So this just is egg wash. Egg. This is just water and, water and mixed up eggs. Yeah. And that just, just gives them a little bit of a golden color. Yeah. And then they go into the oven. Going in at 350 for how long? Well, it takes about like 15 minutes. Not that long. Okay. All right. Looks like they're done here. Beautiful. I mean, I've seen out. better, but I've seen worse. I mean, I'm definitely a little rusty. Even the pros I make know. mistakes. Right? It happens. All right, I'm gonna come your way though. Okay. And warm, and warm. Check that out. They smell pretty amazing. Oh yeah. They're and they're gonna, gonna taste, taste amazing. Yeah. They just don't look the prettiest. They just, yeah, they're definitely not the prettiest. <laughs> All right, so then we got a little melted butter here, garlic butter. Oh just yeah. Brush a little bit on top. Spring goes some salt on? Yeah, of course. This oh, I smell that garlic. America. This is America. <laughs> you get butter and salt. Mm -hmm. Garlic, butter, and salt. The more, the merrier. All right. And which one are we going to try? That one looks the best to me. Yeah, it's probably the one I made. That's so. definitely the one I made through the double twist, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, uh, we need to see what they actually look like if we come and eat one of these in one of your restaurants. Yeah, yeah. But Let me grab one of those. We can imagine. All right. Yeah. Yeah. These look a little bit better. Yeah. All right, let's try it though. Matt, oh. you gonna come, come give us a roll with us? With a fork oh, and knife? Off. Is that what? I was just gonna use a fork, but if you wanna be There's fancy, a knife. You, put your, you might wanna put your pinky up. We're gonna burn our mouths <laughs> out here. And do you make this in house too? Yeah, or is it good. just, yeah? It's beer mustard. Mm -mm. Beer mustard? Yeah. Mm -mm. What kind of beer oh, do y'all use? so hot. I know, I'm scared. Of course. Of, course. Yeah, of course. Wow. Okay, moment of truth. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Sorry, right, we did all right. We did all right. Fantastic. It's got that really good crunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still like a little chewy. Mm hmm. Mm. All right. I could eat this every day. Should we go get some more beer? I took a really big bite. <laughs> no, it's okay. I got ahead of myself. Yeah. What's next on the agenda? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got we have the pretzels. Let's go get some beer. Let's go check out Oktoberfest at No Lie. Let's go. Welcome back. We are here at No Lie Beer Hall with some of the best and brightest beer makers in Spokane. Can y'all just first of all introduce yourselves? Yeah. Uh, Matt Hansen with uh, Whistle Point Brewing. John Bryant, No Lie Brew House. Uh, Matt Gilbreth, Humble Abode Brewing. And Tim Hillstrom with Flatstick Pub. We just sell all their fine products. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. Then yes. we can yeah. one stop yes. shop. Yeah, somebody's got to do that, right? Yeah, so I guess tell us why Spokane. Why did you guys decide to work here? Yeah, for me, um, 
I grew up in Spokane and uh, knew I wanted to start a brewery in college and Spokane just made a lot of sense. Uh, we had a big emerging beer scene. Nolai has been a big part of that and um, we really saw the trajectory. The fact that Spokane just really loves to support local business. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, well, Spokane, I mean, I, I didn't grow up here. I, I went to high school here for like a year and a half and then ended up making my way back. So I've been here since uh, 2006. Um, and uh, yeah, just homebrewed. And I uh, was like, hey, you know what? I mean, I had, I had a really great day job <laughs> and, uh, you know, gave pretty much all that up to follow this. And, you know, this, I mean, Spokane's a, it, it is emerging. I mean, it, I, I would say we've got one of the best beer scenes in Washington. Yeah. It's, Especially it's for capital. Growing. <laughs> for capital, yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 I feel yeah. like homebrewing is where it starts. Like, yeah. ladies, yeah. if your husband wants to get into homebrewing, be careful because he's going to want to start his home brewery, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And make hundreds of dollars a year. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. And yeah. where are y'all located? Uh, we're up on Pittsburgh and Houston, so north side. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Francis, Nevada area. Cool. Yeah. Plastics downtown. Yes. No lie, obviously we're here. <laughs> yeah. And Whistle Punk. Yeah, we're right downtown on First and Monroe. Okay. Yep. Very right cool. by an awesome restaurant, Kill the Unicorn. It's oh, right never heard right. of it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Extra plug. <laughs> nice. And and where do you guys see like the future of breweries in Spokane or the industry here? Well, this is a destination now. I mean, yeah. thanks to yeah, this definitely. crew yeah. and there's 40, 50 other breweries yeah. that are just cultivating this movement. Yeah. Food music, you know, the culinary scene, the arts, the education base we have here. I mean, Spokane's going to be a cool incubator for a lot of stuff. Well, and it's still affordable somewhat, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Affordable to start something and risk a little bit. Yeah, correct. Be able to start a brewery right. <laughs> yeah. from uh, being a home brewer. So that's, I think that's part of it. But it also takes people that are collaborating together and, and developing something. So I think you guys are all, you know, kind of moving in that direction. Tell us a little bit about the program that you guys are developing, are working on. For? Eastern. Eastern. Oh, yeah. So... Mom and dad both went to Eastern years ago, and um, it's been kind of a heartfelt thing. Really out of respect to my father, who's 86 and still going. Wow. And, it's um, all the beer, right? Yeah. But yeah. one thing yeah. we all struggle yeah. with is, is brewing talent, because we're a young brewing culture in Spokane. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, since Prohibition, there hasn't Definitely. been really yeah. a movement, a strong movement. Yeah. And we need people that come out of the schools and the trades and can work at a beer distributor, mm. even work in pubs, but... Yeah help us in, in breweries. Yeah. So the, help, the hope is after four years, they'll have done internships perhaps at a, at a bunch of breweries. The young students will figure out this is what they want to do because we're truly in a trade. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're blue collar, passionate yeah. artists, emotional, like all our paintings are the best, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But we want to graduate people through that Matt or Matt or Tim could bring in and they've already had experience, they love beer, and then we've got a talent pool to pull from. Yeah. Well, it really is a craft. I mean, it's something you're I mean, people don't, I don't think they see the whole scene of it, but yeah. you're back there, you're grinding, yeah. you're washing, yeah. oh, man. you're yes. washing stuff, you're, you're hauling grain, you're doing all those things, and it's a lot of backbreaking work, but mm -hmm. to be able to get into that, I mean, cooking is some, somewhat like that, too. It seems really sexy in a way, but you're just, you're cleaning, <laughs> you're, right, right. Yeah. you're cooking, in the grime, yeah. Cooking yeah. in your own kitchen is a little yeah. different than <laughs> yeah, in cooking a restaurant for, where, yeah, 300 had, people, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. and that's kind of the thing with yeah. that program, too, is like, hey, you know, they're going to get homebrewers in there yeah. and they're going to go, this is mm -hmm. great. And then they're going to come on your scale or your, yeah. our scale and they're yeah. going to go, I don't, yeah. I don't really like this. Right. Or they're going to go, or, oh my yeah. gosh, this yeah. is yeah. The, the best thing ever. And then they're going to follow that path, which is great. Well, and like setting that path somewhat. So you have yeah. someone that can say, they started homebrewing and then they're able to like go to the next step. Correct. Because you know, sometimes it's really hard to jump, take that leap, mm -hmm. you yep. know, from a couple kegs, you know, yeah. to mm -hmm. doing yeah. 10 to, you know, uh, 150. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the first 30 kids started, they're in. Yeah, and that's awesome. I think this group will all be asked to go out for an evening class at Eastern yeah. and whatever they're interested in. I mean, it could, it's going to go beyond brewing and filter and cellar. It's going to have human resources, finance, marketing, sales. Which is all, so yeah. All yeah. important because sometimes we spend most of our time sometimes cleaning, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we, all the business of making beer, and then you get back to what you love, which is just this yeah. product yeah. that's right. amazing. Yeah. yeah. The well, it's labor product. intensive, but yeah. then it's so rewarding to actually like see that come to fruition. So yeah. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the best part about beer is it is extremely labor intensive, but what is cool is there's a tangible product at the end. Yeah. And it happens like it rotates fairly often. So I've always said it's super rewarding. Yeah. But it is behind the scenes. You're pretty much just cleaning. You have a little bit of that instant of gratification right. when it's right. done, yeah. right? Yep. When you're able to can the product totally. or try it at the very end. Yeah. But 
Yeah, you get a little bit of that. It's a, it's a little bit. <laughs> At the end of the day, if you go to Tim's place and you get to try your beer or you try Matt's yeah. or Matt's beer, yeah. and that's a rewarding thing. Beer. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, yeah, it's a... And, and what do you look for, like, in a brewery? What are you looking for when you're looking for uh, beers to be uh, a plastic? Number one, got to be independent from Washington. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's the vision has never wavered with Sam and Andy that started this. Love that, yeah. <laughs> and we appreciate the support. They've never, yeah. wa- never wavered. It's only independent brewery. Okay. You know, ciders, seltzers. I mean, and so yeah, that's just uh, you know people with like minds. Mm-hmm. We love to help promote and get you know everyone's product out there. And I mean, we're in a unique spot to where we can help, hopefully, take people to the next level. Yeah. And get more exposure. And you know, like it's, I mean, for me, like yeah, I don't have to work as hard as these guys. <laughs> so I. <laughs> a real cool part about this group that I think we all pulled together today is how much uh, Matt does up in his neighborhood with his brewery. Obviously, how much Matt does downtown with his brewery and around the city, really, and what Tim does through Flatstick in the Washington community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think part of our trade is we all give back, and it doesn't matter how much money it is. It's our time, and yeah. as Cindy yeah. says, time and treasure. Yeah. So it's what you have the ability to do, and that's what craft brewing, I think, is a huge part of all these neighborhoods we're all part of. Craft beer follows this community. Following community is, is the outreach. Mm-hmm. And all these fan bases of, what, 50 breweries within 20 mm-hmm. miles of here, is who they get back to. A lot of those people come into their pub and they share oh, yeah. experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it just the wheel keeps moving. Yeah. Well, and drinking for a cause. I mean, that's not yeah. the worst, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Absolutely. You're gonna do those things. How do you how do you tie back like the land and kind of uh, where do you get your grain from? The hops. Um, how do you tie that back to the beer and the brew and the community? Yeah. So I mean, Spokane. We're super blessed with uh, just like our grain shed. We grow seventy five to like ninety yeah. percent of the nation's hops here in yeah. Yakima. Mm-hmm. Um, we use a lot of malt that's grown like in the Palouse or like Southern Washington. Um, and it's malted by Link Malt. They're located in Spokane Valley. So uh, yeah, so we, we try to use their malt as much as possible. Um, it's cool to see the farmers that, you know, like grew your grains, yeah. like, in, you know, on the other side of the bar, drinking a pint. Totally. Yeah. People who grow the hops. We're doing a beer next, uh, this week with Hops grown up in Green Bluff at Big Barn Brewing. Oh, very cool. And yeah. then malt that was grown just less than 100 miles away, malted here. So it'll be like 100% land beer. That's um, really great. Yeah, yeah. really, That's really cool. cool. And not a lot of parts of the country can do that. Yeah. 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 Gosh, well, thank you all so much for being here. Yeah. Now it's time to go have fun, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. Great. Get some beers. Join us next week for another episode of Crave TV. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. Right. Cheers. Put your cans in.